Hi, welcome back to Light Chaser Studio. Uh, my name is Sarah Cools, and today I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes and show you a little bit of how I go through the process of making an illustration. So the first thing I'll do is just sketch out an idea, and it'll usually be pretty rough. Um, so depending on how detailed it is, I'll often use a light board to take that sketch and then draw it onto um, the watercolor paper. This just helps reduce the amount of erasing that has to happen on the watercolor paper. The more you erase it, the more it takes away the texture and will make the paints behave differently. So the less erasing you have to do, the better, which is why I use the light board. So once the sketch is on the paper, then I will test out colors and things. I'm not the best at doing this. I often just kind of jump into illustrations and just go for it. But I've been trying to get better at that because it's better to make a mistake on a test piece of paper rather than the final illustration. Although, of course, you can turn mistakes into happy accidents, but um, in the long run, it's better to practice different techniques outside of the work that you're doing for your final project. So today's illustration, I used a mixture of watercolor and gouache, and I used some scotch tape to mark off my edges which just prevents the paint from um, going all the way to the edge. And when you take off the tape, it'll leave a really clean line, which I just love that look. And I know a lot of other artists use that same method. And then I went in first with a watercolor wash kind of deal, just because I'm more familiar with watercolor and I wanted to kind of block out the main ideas of where the lights and shadows were and get just all of that blocked out in my mind so that when I came back in with the gouache, it wouldn't be quite as overwhelming because I just don't use gouache so much. I haven't used it hardly at all. And so it's kind of intimidating still. This piece was inspired by um, one of my good friends um, who is an artist and a musician. She has some of her music on uh, Spotify. I think her name is uh, Sarah Beth on there, and she just has such wonderful music. It's really whimsical, and um, the lyrics are awesome, and I highly recommend checking her out. It's fantastic stuff, and I hope she comes out with an album soon because I'm dying to have more music I listen to it while I draw and just around the house and it's, it's on a lot of my different playlists on Spotify. Here I'm still using watercolor and just finding some more of the shadows of the dress. I haven't really done clothes that much and so <laughs> I was really nervous doing clothes, which is something I haven't done, and then also on top of that doing gouache, which is also something that I haven't really done. So there was a lot of unknowns going into this piece, but I think it turned out pretty well after all. And then I used a couple different colors of green gouache, and I think I mixed some blue in there too, just to give it a deeper and richer tone. In every single art piece, um, goes through an ugly stage. This one was, it was really nice because I did the whole picture in basically one sitting, I think. So I was able to start it out. I mean, sometimes when you start out a picture, you are really excited. You're enjoying the line work and you like the original sketch or whatever. And then you get halfway through and you're like, this looks so awful. And that can be a really frustrating and kind of discouraging point. But you have to push through and get to the end and be able to add details and kind of just pull the piece together. So it was nice doing this all in one sitting where I could see that progression and come away from the end feeling like, okay, it actually turned out really well rather than just leaving it kind of in the middle when it's still in a ugly phase. There are a lot of layers that go into 
um, painting, and I didn't even add that many just because I wasn't sure how the gouache would handle layers. I've heard different people say different things. Some people will say that you can layer it a lot, and other people that say it's the exact opposite. You kind of have to just use your colors pre-mixed and not to go back over it and play around with it too much. So I just try to do basic shapes and not overwork the paint. Then I did all of her skin tones and hair and the little olive branch there. I did all of that with watercolors. Then I took black and a little bit of blue gouache to do the backgrounds. These little circles took forever to do. The base of them is just watercolor. Um, and then I came back later and added a little bit darker of a blue watercolor around it. And uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit. So with the black, I did add some blue because I didn't want it to just be a matte black. I wanted to have a little bit of um, depth to it, I guess. If I were to do it again, especially with such a large space, I think I would have tried mixing a like a red and a green or maybe a red and blue or something like that together to make a really dark color just so it wouldn't be quite as cold and harsh looking as the black is. Obviously, I mean, I was going for the space look of a night sky, but I think it would have been nice to have a little bit more warmth. And I know a lot of painters suggest staying away from doing pure black um, for that very reason that it kind of sucks the warmth out of a picture, which I don't know if you can really see from the video. And I mean, it doesn't look terrible. I, I think it looks great, uh, especially when it's finished and everything. But that being said, I think I might experiment later and try adding different colors together. So after I um, did most of the black, then I went back in with blue gouache. And because gouache and watercolor are both water soluble, um, you can re like reactivate the paint which is wonderful if you want to blend so with all the little star things in the background I added a little bit of watercolor and then just a bunch of water in order to blend out all the edges and kind of make them fade into each other and then added the gouache next to that and did the same thing just taking quite a bit of water and lifting out the pigment and then blending it together which took a very, very long time. Um, it's quite a laborious task, and I, I don't know if this is the best way to do it. This is just what I tried, and I think it worked pretty well. It just definitely took a long time and patience, but I had my audiobook to listen to, so I didn't get bored. <laughs> and they looked really pretty when they were done, so I would say that's a win-win. But it's definitely a lot of work. Um, and... Sometimes it can be not like scary, but um, sorry, my my voice is like dying right now. <laughs> um, but if you add too much water, it can do weird things to the paint. So you have to find a good mixture of enough water to help lift off the paint, but not too much water that it just goes everywhere and then starts to um, leak into the rest of the picture and dilute those colors. So I want to make sure that the black area stayed black and that the rest were the lighter, more faded color. And then, of course, the details. Uh, one thing that I realized during this is that I don't take enough time to do test pieces and to kind of um, work on honing my techniques and things outside of illustrations. I think I have this kind of fear of wasting supplies, especially when they're more um, expensive items. And so I just avoid doing that and I jump into a picture before I've really learned how to use my uh, supplies. And so that's something that I really want to work on is being okay with testing things out and just doing 
picture studies and things like that in order to improve my skills because there's no point in just waiting to use the nice things until you know how to use them because you're not going to know how to use them until you actually use them. So that's something that I need to work on and you'll probably see more of those kind of things in my Instagram story and stuff. Which, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Light Chaser Studio, and I'll leave the link or whatever, the jazz, down below with that and for all the other things. So this is how it turned out, and I think it's really pretty, and I hope you liked it and enjoyed watching this. Um, I try to post every Wednesday, so I'll see you next time. Till then, keep chasing the light. Bye.